this, <laughs> ever, this off season. At the expense of everything else. Well, yes, to a great degree, yeah. But it was clear that that would when when all of a sudden dust settles here, free agent pickups and the draft. It was clear they needed to address the running game, and they did. They got the short yardage guy and a tough yardage guy, Legarrette Blunt. They've got a guy who think they think could be their number one running back in Carry On Johnson. They've got a new starter on the offensive line. They've added much needed depth to the offensive line. They got a fullback. They added a fullback. Yeah, no, it's no 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 funniness there. They added a fullback. They added a fullback. Uh, so they they I mean, are, they're not playing it. They're not going to stop anybody running with this personnel. They're they're rolling on. The, they are determined saying, to get the running game going. Patricia's presence alone will do it. We'll see if this works. Let's go to Alex in Clarkston Yard, ninety seven on a ticket. Hi, Alex. Hey guys, how's it going? Okay. Um, you know, I I uh, I like this draft. Um, I, I didn't think it was amazing, but I think King uh, really nailed it uh, on the head on how uh, I feel at least. Um, I trust Bob Quinn to where the point, you know, like to get carry on over guys. I trust that he believes and, you know, everyone in the uh, organization believes that carry on is going to be a better fit than guys. Um, I did like the, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't at first like the Ragnall pick, but, you know, after doing research and whatnot, I, uh, I do like it now. I did have issue with the Tracy Walker pick. Uh, I would have liked to take Mo Hurst and just roll the dice and take a chance. Uh, on him, but uh, I thought for the most part we did good. I thought uh, Sean Hantick, like uh, Gator said, it's a high risk, high reward. He could end up being a stud and realizing his potential, or you know he could just be a complete bust. And uh, for me, yeah, for everyone was saying that I'm lo- uh, looking online that uh, Tyrell Crosby seemed like to be a real steal, but I don't know if you guys know. Like I guess he might have like concussion he might we'll like see that. i mean he I, I like that pick that's probably if you were to ask me which pick do i actually like that's that's it um but here's the problem alex is i think they could have played the draft in a shrewd way like the best organizations do new england walked away with nine picks they took guys that feel like they were trade down and get guys every single yeah. one of their first four picks Oh, they traded down and got Ragnow, add an extra pick. Oh, they traded down and got Carry on Johnson and added an extra pick. Oh, they traded down and 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 took the the safety and added an extra pick. That's what they all feel like. And they can sit here and they can tell us all day, well, we thought somebody else was going to take him. Uh, okay, that's what you thought, but at the end of the day there were other players there that looked like they could help you and all these first four picks have a trade down and take them kind of feel. Yeah, I do. I, 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 I do wish we had uh, more picks. But well, that's I exactly it. Shows, like, New England I, 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 ended I, I, up with nine. The data is there that it's quantity over quality when it comes to the draft. And the Lions, actually, this draft, not only did they have feel like they reached for guys, they gave up two draft picks in the future. What, what really hurt them, I think, early on, is one of the pivotal moves in the draft was when Rashad Penny went in the first round. You think he was on their board, huh? Well, it's and, not that he may, I don't know if he was or wasn't, but I'm going to say this. When he goes in the first round as the second running back, and then Sony Michelle goes in the first round, I'll say you have three running backs in the first round, and people thought there was just going to be one. And Nick Chubb goes early in the in the second, and then Ronald Jones goes with a sixth pick in the second. That's five running backs gone in the first 38 picks in a, in a draft where you thought that so there were. You, did we say they panicked? I don't know if they panicked. I, I think that they were dead set on getting a running back in a second round, and then they they panicked because they they knew that Washington was had their eye on Carry On Johnson, and they they didn't want Darius Geis. If that's if that's panic, then then sure. But I think that's what happened is that they got down to it, and they had six running backs they wanted to take, and they were down to their sixth one. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Tim on a cell. Hi, Tim. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for taking the call. Sure. You know, it's just all this negativity about the draft. It's just killing me. I listened to you guys over the weekend, and I'm listening to you now. And it's just like we don't know how these guys are going to turn out. I mean, you, you have one team. That's, you have three teams that are highly successful, Green Bay, Pittsburgh, and New England. And New England definitely – has used the strategy of, of of trading picks, trading down and getting more picks, and that's worked very well for him. But in the case of Pittsburgh, who's won a lot of Super Bowls, 
And Green Bay, that's really not their strategy. And, you know, if you look back, where did New England draft their quarterback? Way down. And and I remember San Diego, and I'm not sure if it was the first. All right, what do you think? Second, Let me ask you this. What do you, what do you think of the pick? Name, what do you think of the Lions would, draft? They consider him oh, the worst God. pick in the history of football. What do you think of the and, Lions draft? He was a, he was a first round Take first Tim, Tim, pick. Tim, you Tim. The guy's name? Forget it. Yeah, his name was Ryan Leaf, Tim, but uh, but you're not listening to us anyway. No, it, look, this, this, of course nobody knows. We get that. In fact, that was the first disclaimer. The question is, though, what do you think of what they did? I, I can sit here and tell you in 2022 what this draft was like. Uh, well, wait. I'll kick back and wait five years. I mean, what do you want us to do? Well, I should have drafted that guy. You talk about persistence. He was focused. Way, New England had nine picks. They backed down, and they had the, They kept moving back. Nine picks. Green Bay, I think, ended up with 11. 11. I'm going to go look at Pittsburgh. I don't think Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh just had the standard seven, but hold on. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they had seven. So, But those teams and the Lions gave up draft picks and then reached for guys. I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't want to just change the narrative because I want it to be successful. <laughs> I think we skew pretty positively here, but I don't like this draft. Champ and Chump, let's get to our Champ and Chump nominations. Champ and Chump of the weekend, who had a great weekend, who had a bad weekend. I will start Gator, my Champ of the weekend. The champ is here! It's a bit of a stretch, but I got to tell you, I am pleased with what I'm seeing out of Jacoby Jones. He had three more hits uh, on Saturday and Sunday. I mean, three for nine is not a stellar weekend, but this is a guy who's hitting out 270. It was a question of where, whether or not he could fit in. It looks like he might stick. He's got a shot to stick here. It's early, but he's got a shot to stick, and that would be nice because he's a, he's a good athlete with great speed, some position versatility. Jacoby Jones, my champ, champ of the weekend. I'm no fan of the Denver Broncos. If you've listened to me on the air for the last you know, 15 years, you know I'm not a big fan of the, the Denver Broncos. However, I'm a big fan of their draft. They lucked into the fifth pick overall with that Bradley Chubb was there. They got the best defensive player in the draft, in my opinion. They take Bradley Chubb. They also uh, didn't panic. They waited the third round. They divided their time. They took Royce Freeman, the running back out of Oregon. They got Josie Jewell in the fourth round, the linebacker from Iowa, who I am really high on. And maybe this is just me being selfish of guys that I like, but I really like their draft. They also took Troy Fumagalli in the fifth round, uh, and they added more depth uh, players uh, throughout this draft. I... I think the Broncos did a great job of improving their roster with what they did not only in the draft, but of course what they did in the offseason as well. Chump nomination. Man, you a chump. Bob Quinn. I mean, I prove of him as GM, but I don't think this was a good weekend. Period. I just I don't understand it. I think they stretched. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope he's right. Shut up. Well, I'll go with uh, the officials in the NHL. They, they just can't seem to get the uh, the replay done. They're, I'll say the replay officials. They can't seem to get right. Disallowed goals. It should be allowed. Allowed goals. Disallowed. Whatever it is. I mean, there was a case yesterday, a couple different goals. But the one that sticks out is the uh, the one in Pittsburgh and Washington. Hornquist had a, had a goal that should have counted. It didn't. There's a still photo that shows the puck that's behind the line. Should have counted. And um, it's just one of those things that if you got replay, you should be able to get it right, and they just haven't gotten it right. Get your champ and chump nominations in, 248-539-9797. Let's go to Sam in Dearborn. Hi, Sam. Hi, yeah, how you doing? All right. Uh, I was listening to you guys earlier. Uh, yeah, I heard people criticizing the third-round pick and the, full, and, and the last round for the fullback. I don't understand why they needed a third-round pick, and I don't understand why they needed the fullback because they, they had Zach Zenner to do all that stuff. But uh, what I didn't understand is why didn't they pick like a tight end, and uh, and also maybe a, a, a linebacker. My only excuse of that is they didn't have a whole lot of depth in the draft for that reason. But it doesn't matter. You could have just picked up a linebacker and a tight end. They didn't pick up either one of those. I give them, I give them an overall B minus because I still think they 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 graded, you know, they 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 went with what was best. But I don't understand why they didn't pick up any of those. Well, I don't know why they didn't pick up a tight end. It seemed obvious that, that they needed to add, to draft a tight end. They didn't. Um, I, I didn't Ebron leave? What's that? Didn't Ebron didn't leave? Yeah. Well, they, they cut him. They cut him, whatever, however. They, that's, that's, again. Yeah, no, they had it. I'm agreeing with um, this a weird call. I, I agree with you, Sam. They, they I, I thought that they should have drafted a, line, a, a tight end. They didn't do it. They didn't uh, take a linebacker either. Why they take the fullback? 
either the fullback's there because they're committed to the running game and they want to add a fullback in the running game or because they like him for special teams purposes. This is a seventh-round pick. I, I'm not going to go crazy what they do in the seventh round and get too upset or too happy about it unless it's I mean, a guy the, I really this, like. But If you're to tell me that the Lions' defensive issues are all going to be solved by Patricia's presence alone, then I think this draft has real potential. But he's a head coach, not a defensive coordinator. Uh, they I, used one, well, two picks on defense. I guess yeah, you look at I, I just, and, and, and I'm not even sure I'm crazy about who they took. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Ticket text nine seven one three six. Carson Anderson. More your phone calls coming up nine seven one.